In this video, I want to take a look at using some more complex if-then statements. So here I have some sales. I have the product ID and I have the quantity sold. And I want to fill in my price each and my total sale based off of this price schedule. So for example, for product ID 1001, if they purchased 10 or fewer items, I want it to be $4.99. 11 to 20 items, we'll charge them $3.99. If they purchased more than 20 items, we'll charge them $2.99. And I have a similar scale um, for the other product IDs. So if I look at the logic, the first thing I need to do is figure out what this product ID is and if the uh, quantity uh, to, to determine the price each. So let's take a look at how we'll get this started. So here I've created a sub. Uh, my sub is going to loop, so I've created a loop counter, I for my rows, and I got my loop working correctly. Um, in order to make sure I'm looping through all of the rows, I used in rows as a counter, and I calculated the in rows using the range of ranges. So A3 was my first piece of data, uh, and then A10,000 up, rows count. Uh, I'm minus one because I'm starting with zero. And then I declared the variable product ID. I declared it as a string because I'm anticipating that it's gonna be all numbers, but I'm not sure. So I just declared it as a string. And then into the, the uh, variable in each row or in each loop, uh, I'm going to get the value. Then I've got four if statements here, one for each of my product IDs. And instead of using the else if, I chose to make each one their own standalone uh, if then statement because once I detect it, I'm going to look for some quantity. I'm going to have uh, some other things going on inside of there. And if it matches, and to match, since I declared it as a string, populated it as a string, I have to put it as a string. So I'll need to have the quotes around it. So if it's 1,001, I want to make it yellow, two, green, so on. So when I run, it seems to be working. It's finding the product ID correctly, it's correctly matching, and it's correctly setting the color. Now color has nothing to do with what I'm actually trying to do. I'm just taking this step by step so I can see when things break. And so it looks like my if-then statements are working correctly. So now I'm looking uh, at using nested if statements. So if the product ID is 1001, then I'm going to do check for these conditions. And then end if that product ID 1001. So if it's 1001, I'm going to check and see if the quantity is less than 10. And if it is, then I'm going to mark the, the price each as 499. Uh, if it's greater than or equal to 10, and it's less than or equal to 20. So we're right here. Then I'm gonna set it to 399. Otherwise, if it's greater than 20, I'm going to set it here. Now I've hard coded these values in. Um, I guess we could also try to pick them up out of the chart. Let's see if that works. Uh, well, let's see if this works first. So if I run this, 1001, quantity 2 is 499, quantity 25 is 299, and quantity 14 is 399. So it seems to be working correctly. Now I would want to very carefully test the boundaries. So here uh, it looks like it should be uh, less than or equal to 10. Uh, and then if it's 11 to 20 items, so if it's greater than or equal to 11. So what happens if I set this to 11? I should see it go to 399. And it does. And what happens if it's 10? I should see it go to 499. 
and it does. And I would want to test this on this 20, so 1920, 20, 21 boundary, uh, 9, 10, 11 boundary, to make sure that it's actually falling where I want it to. I'm thoroughly testing my condition statements. Once I have it working correctly with one, then I can copy and paste it uh, to the different uh, products below. Uh, also, let me just try quickly to see if I can use that value. So it would be J3. And there's no offset. So now hopefully it will make the value of the cell whatever's in J3. And that's working. And this makes it very modular because now I don't have to change it in all the places in my code. I can just come update my price chart and it'll work. So I think we should flip over and use that. So now I've switched everything. I'm actually getting the value off of this little chart. And that's working correctly. If we had a price increase, and this needed to go $5.99, $4.99, and $3.99, one change on the chart, and my code picks it up. So that's a pretty good way to do it. It makes it very modular. When I look at this next one then, 2002, again, I've got a nested if statement, so I'm going to check to see if it's 2002. If it is, then I'm going to do the, these uh, condition checks in here. My price break stays the same, so I don't have to mess with those. Uh, and then I just had to switch this to be the J4, K4, L4 values. So let's see what happens now. things begin to fill in. And here, when everything is all filled out across all the product IDs, and I run it, everything is populating. And again, it would be really important here to make sure I am testing um, the boundaries to make sure those are working correctly. To get the quantity, that I'm testing in here, I'm used testing a variable. Uh, in the loop, the first thing I'm going to do is grab the product ID. The next thing I'm going to do is grab the quantity. And so the quantity is just going to be uh, that B3 range and then offset by I0. Just like I was getting the product ID, I'm getting the quantity the same way. Now, if I'm looking to finish my problem, uh, I'm, I've got the quantity and I've got the product IDs read into the variable. Based on that quantity, I'm making a bunch of decisions. Then I need to capture price each and then use price each and quantity to figure total sale. So I've just declared two more variables, price each and total sale, both as currency. I pulled in the product ID and the quantity. Then based off product ID and based off quantity, I'm making decisions and writing them into this column. So if I come to the end, I'm still inside my loop, but I'm after all of my decisions. Then I'll just read the value that was written into this column C. And again, I'm inside the loop, so I'm still offset by the, my loop number, zero column. And then, and then to figure total sale, it's going to be in the D column. Again, offset by the loop number that we're on, zero column. That value is going to be equal to quantity times price each. So my loop, this last little bit of information should fill out. For each row, and then it'll go to the next loop and fill out across for that row. Go to the next loop, fill out across for that row because I'm offset by I's comma zero. And if I look at this, I actually don't need this total sale variable. I'm not calculating it. I'm just writing the, the value uh, into the range. So let's see uh, if this works now. Very good. So again, I would want to uh, test to make sure it's breaking 
where it's supposed to according to my schedule, my price schedule. So if it's 10 items or fewer, I would wanna see what happens with nine, 10, and 11. And then here, I would wanna see what happens with uh, 19, 20, 21 to make sure it's flipping uh, where it's supposed to. I would also want to manually figure this uh, just to make sure that my calculations are occurring correctly uh, in my loop. So pretty, pretty complex example, a lot of things going on inside of there, a lot of reading the values and writing them into variables, a uh, lot of decisions being made, nested if-then statements using else if uh, to test for uh, more complex conditions, um, and uh, finally writing them out using the loop.